Hi, I'm Ed Sproy. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Fraunhofer with Andre Langa, who's going to talk today about reliability in chips. So Andre, as we start getting into things like automotive, reliability becomes much more important, particularly as you started to use these, these chips for the first time in safety critical type of applications. Some of them are, are even supposed to last 18 years. How do we know that? How do we know that it's actually going to work that long? Well, there are a couple of methods, uh, methods established for the semiconductor industry to check whether um, the technology is reliable or not. And most of them is written down in the JEDEC standards. And uh, that's what we particularly do and what will be done in the future for advanced nodes as well. Are they sufficient? There are things uh, that seem to be sufficient. There are others where there's still some, uh, some work needs to be done. Some effects need to be investigated further. Um, to come up with a feasible solution for them. So Andre, what are we looking at here? Well, reliability is a wide field. So in my team, we especially work on transistor reliability. That means on the degradation of integrated transistors due to stress. And what we do in the measurements is we measure the behavior of a transistor. And this is um, drawn here. So when you have a look at the time, there are stress phases where we apply particular operating conditions to the transistor. Then there are measurement phases where we check how the behavior changes, and then this procedure repeats more and more. But not all transistors age at the same rate, right? That's true. It's particularly true for uh, technologies down to 7 nanometers or 12 or 14, where there is uh, a variation aspect on top of the degradation behavior. And what happens at older nodes, say 90 nanometers or 180? So there are some physical uh, mechanisms which lead to the variation of degradation, and they tended to average out in 90 nanometer nodes. But in a chip in 90 nanometers, the transistors age differently because of the different bias conditions that they see depending on the design. And this aging can change, particularly at the, the advanced nodes, on things like uh, AI logic in an autonomous vehicle. Uh, those are going to be used potentially differently by different people, right, in different conditions? That's correct. And that's a particular question uh, which is now under investigation for the stress phases here. Um, there are also different kinds of stress, right? So now you have to deal with things like um, electrical stress as well, uh, electrical overstress as well, uh, things like ambient uh, conditions for in the environment. The, the, you think about a chip in a car, it's under incredibly harsh conditions sometimes. That's true. So for the integrated transistors, um, we know that the electrical stress is very important, um, ambient temperature is very important. For the transistor itself, it's not that important whether the chip is under vibration because it's in a car or whether there's humidity. So it's more the electrical and the thermal conditions uh, which are important here. There's been a lot of talk about what's the minimum amount of time that you have to uh, test these chips out in the field uh, simulating. These chips are supposed to last for 18 years with no serious degradation of function, right? Yes. So is that even possible? Um, well, the products outside today show that it is possible. Um, there are some mathematical formulations uh, written down in the standards on how to deal with them. But there is also some work indicating that these standards might not be too accurate for advanced nodes down to 7 nanometers. So where does it stop? What's, when's the re where's the reliability curve start? Uh, tailing off? Well, our experience is that um, the technologies behave better than the standard models would um, predict. So it's more a question on how to, let's say, how to design the technology. Uh, how do we ensure that it's reliable enough, but it's not over-engineered? So this is a, a question. In particular, we see in measurements kind of a saturation of the degradation behavior. And this is something which is not uh, included in the st uh, JEDEC standard models yet. Does it matter if it's a digital chip versus an analog chip? Is there a, a difference in the degradation? Um, from our point of view, yes, it does matter. But this is a particular question whether this is um, already investigated to the extent that it needs to be. So this is a particular question for the stress phases here. Is it a constant stress, which is usually um, applied in the measurements according to JEDEC standard? Do I use um, digital stress signals? If yes, uh, what are the frequencies? Um, is it an analog signal? So then things will change a little bit. Or 
at least we need to investigate on how much um, this will change. There's also a predictable degradation in how a chip functions over time, right? Yes. So in particular, we can map this behavior. What we see here, the change in the transistor behavior, um, just uh, indicated here with this IDVG curve over time. We can transform them into simulation models, and they allow to simulate the chip and its behavior after, say, n years of operation. If you have a sensor that's starting to degrade, what kind of impact does that have? Um, it depends on the sensor itself. So it might get slower, um, it might get inaccurate. Um, usually there are methods to deal with it in the design um, that the sensor and the um, evaluation circuitry, that they know that both of them can degrade and then they can handle this, but at least this needs to be investigated during design. And there's also the possibility of things like recalibrating the sensor, right, as you go along in order to take advantage of this if you do understand how it degrades. Yes, that's true. How about things like compound semiconductors and some of the new materials that are out there, things like uh, silicon carbide and gallium nitride? So our experience here in-house is from um, silicon technologies, and we know that there are degradation mechanisms which are similar in compound semiconductors, but there are also, due to the different device architecture, some effects which are completely different. So what we would need to investigate is um, to what extent does which um, mechanism contribute to the degradation, which one is important, which one is not. Does it depend on device conditions? Does it depend on frequencies or whatever? So right now we're at, at seven nanometers. It's likely that uh, some of these chips, particularly for AI purposes, will push down to five and three nanometers simply because they need more uh, accelerator elements in order to process faster and also as much area as they can possibly get, more memory on there. Is it possible to simulate these effectively? Um, I think it will be possible one day um, because the methods to test the single transistors will not really change. But at three or five nanometers, there will be additional sources of degradation and of variation inside. And an additional um, effect that comes into play is the denser you pack the transistors in your chip, the more healthy heating will be there. And then the question will be what type of temperatures do you really see at the junctions inside your chip and whether you can really as um, access them to predict the degradation behavior. But you don't actually need all of the transistors to function, right? There's probably a formula in there that says, okay, this is 85% functioning and 15% aren't working. That will still work as a chip. Yes, so there are different aspects. The one is the design itself. Um, does the chip allow some transistors to be not working anymore? Or whether it's um, let's assume you have a transistor inside the chip and the VT shifted by 20%. So there might be chips for which this is completely acceptable and they will work, still work. And there might be others where this is not acceptable anymore and they do not work. So it's a combination of technology, of design, of biasing conditions, and maybe some uh, recalibration strategies that um, can be combined or have to be combined in order to make the chip reliable. And really understanding how these chips will degrade over time as opposed to uh, just trying to simulate everything up front, right? Sure. A detailed knowledge about what is happening is um, required uh, in order to predict the behavior. Andre Wanga, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome.